Well, let's talk about myths and mortals. It's the title of my next guest's work. Subtitle, Family Business Leadership and Succession Planning. Why do we want to talk about this? Well, that's why we ask our next guest, Andrew Kite, internationally known business strategist and succession planning expert for family-owned businesses. Andrew, good morning. Welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're quite welcome. We talk about you, and I know you're uh, also the executive director of the Loyal University of Chicago Family Business Center. You specialize also with Keat Consulting and assisting family enterprises with next gen leadership development. So this is uh, this is passionate uh, to you. This topic, I I bet. Yes, it's uh, near and dear to my heart. I inherited ownership in our family business. Uh, unfortunately, on my father's deathbed, and uh, so I, I know the unique challenges and they're close to my heart. There we are. Let me uh, start with some some uh, surprising uh, facts uh, versus myths. In America alone, there are more than 20 million family-owned and run businesses. I know from small to, to large, but yet, the, remind me if I'm correct, Andrew, despite the large numbers, uh, uh, starting and growing a successful family business is no easy feat. Take it away. Uh, it is not an easy feat. The statistics say that two-thirds of family businesses don't make it to the next generation. So this is why I'm dedicated to to helping family businesses through that complicated transition from one generation to the next. We are. You take a close look at what causes some successors to soar while others fail to step out of their predecessor's shadow. Again, let's talk myths and mortals, family business leadership and succession planning. Uh, What's your intent with your work and your words? Well, the, the passion behind the book uh, really was I've been training family business successors for almost 20 years now. And the challenge is that a successor is born into a story about their parents and their grandparents is already being told. So the successor's challenge is how do I figure out who I am in the midst of that and start to write a story that's authentic to me, who I am, and what my strengths are. What would be uh, the myth part of your work to begin with? Well, the thing about these stories that are being told about our parents and grandparents is that they're often uh, a conglomeration of of stories that have both fact and fiction mixed in. Uh, We love to create the heroes of these mythic entrepreneurs who never fail and build these great uh, heroic businesses. But the reality is the stories of the struggles and the failures that these people experienced in, in attaining that success often get lost in the mix. And what happens is that creates a shadow that really makes it hard for the successor to figure out who I am and um, how can I bring my unique voice, my unique talents to the table to help my family. What is the successor's greatest challenge and how can they overcome it, Andrew? Well, the, the I like to call it the successor's curse, which is that there are, you're always going to be surrounded by some people who think you're only there because of your name, that you can't possibly be qualified. And so to overcome the successor's curse, uh, a successor has to establish a strong sense of credibility, and there are two main aspects to that. One is internal credibility, is I need to believe it, build belief in myself uh, that I am qualified and that I can do the job and that I've got the talents uh, to be successful in whatever position that I'm uh, targeting. And then the external part of that is, how do I build credibility and belief in others? How do I develop followers within my organization that will uh, follow my lead, that will buy into the vision that I'm, I'm putting forth for the family and the business? I know, Andrew, a common belief amongst family businesses that, that they, they have to protect uh often called the golden goose, the business Mm -hmm. at all costs. You argue that the family is, in fact, the golden goose. Talk to me about this. Yeah, so the the idea that you have to protect the the business from the family actually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if we have to protect the business family, the assumption under that belief is that the family is going to destroy the business. And so what happens is when you think that way, it starts becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. You start to act in ways that tell the family that uh, you can't be trusted with this business. So I like to say, how do you create the family you don't need to protect the business from? So how do we create strong family relationships? How do we have a, a strong sense of responsibility of the family for the business, for the employees, and what the business means to the community? You know, I think if you look at most major metropolitan areas around the country, you'll see that the cultural institutions in those cities were built by families, families giving back, families that believe that uh, 
uh, they've been given uh, great opportunity and they want to share that with others. Andrew Kite with us as latest work is out, Myths and Mortals, Family Business Leadership and Succession Planning, Andrew, K-E-Y-T. Andrew, um, how does the leader of a family business know when it's time to hand over the reins to a successor? Well, we, we act sometimes like succession is an event, uh, that it happens at one moment in time. Uh, and certainly the title shift may be that way, but the reality is for a, a succession to be effective, it starts with preparing the successor well in advance of, of any uh, opportunity of stepping back. But there are a couple of things that, that you can look at as indicators. One is, do we have a qualified and uh, prepared successor uh, that is ready to, to take on the reins, ready to take on new challenges and needs that position for growth? You can look at it from the perspective of the senior generation in terms of uh, are, do they still have the energy? Do they still have the passion? Do they still have the capability of keeping up with the, the changes that are happening in the, in the business space? Um, and asking yourself, what kind of leader does our business need, not just for today, but for the next five years, for the next 10 years? And if the answer to that is somebody other than the current uh, leader, uh, then you need to be thinking about moving on. What else is important when it comes to myths and mortals, Andrew? Well, I, I think, you know, the essence of stepping out of the shadow of your parents for a successor is figuring out and getting very clear about who you are and what you believe. And sometimes that's highly aligned with what your parents think, uh, and sometimes there are quite a number of differences. But one of the people I interviewed in the book was Bill Wrigley, and he had a great saying, which was, uh, respect the past, but always do what's right for the future. So the successor really has to embrace the values uh, and uh, be clear about their vision for the future. You don't just reject the past outright. You honor the past and what it means, but yet make decisions based on your values moving forward that are in the best interest of both the family and the business. Nice. All right. Uh, what can non-family business leaders perhaps learn from this book? Well, I, I think the thing that uh, non-family business leaders can take from this uh, is really the heart of family business. And sometimes in large publicly traded companies, uh, the culture loses a sense of underlying values and commitment to people. Uh, there are a number of lessons from these great family business leaders like Bill Wrigley and John Tyson and Dick DeVos and Massimo Ferragamo uh, that can give you a great example of leadership through values, leadership through mission, leadership through vision, uh, and how to use those values to take care of your people, uh, reinvest in the growth and development of not just your company, but the people that make your company great. And you mentioned Dick DeVos, uh, very important to us in West Michigan. Talk a little bit more here. Well, Dick was very gracious to uh, uh, be a part of the research for this book. And uh, my favorite quote from Dick was, uh, uh, I, may have been, I may have been born on third base, but I learned to hit triples. Uh, you know, that's a great quote from Dick. But, um, you know, Dick is emblematic of, of uh, many of the folks that I interviewed, which was, they had a sense of, I have to work hard. Uh, I can't just uh, act like I deserve this just because of who I am. I have to earn the respect. I have to start at the bottom. You know, Dick tells a story about uh, starting in the warehouse and and, and uh, how seemingly inept he, he was at uh, the challenges of operating in that environment, and, and he just showed great respect for the people uh, that do that work every day and are high achievers in that space. And so that's really emblematic of the humility that was shown by almost all of the successors that I interviewed, the sense of uh, you have to work hard, uh, you have to know that it's about more than just you, and you have to give back to your people. Thanks for giving us your work, Andrew Kite, K-E-Y-T, Myths and Mortals, Family Business Leadership and Succession Planning. How do we find out more information? Uh, 
You can find more information by going to andrewkite.com. That's K-E-Y-T, so andrewkeyt.com. Thanks. Keep up your great work. Thanks so much.